while it's the Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Oh, great. Hi. I'm so sorry about that. I had preloaded an event into YouTube and just wanted to connect my software into that event, but it didn't work. I had to actually create like a live now streaming event so that, I don't know, so that I could connect. Anyway, I'm glad it's finally working. I'm sorry that took 20 minutes. Hi, hi everyone. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. Well, it's so good to see you guys in the chat. I hope it's good to see me. <laughs> And you know what's funny? So I live in Vegas, as most of you know, and it is brutally sunny, as you can imagine, except as soon as like 4.55 came around, this huge cloud came overhead. So now I feel like I'm a little bit in the shade here. But anyway, hope you guys are doing well. Did everyone have a good July 4th? Are all the Americans out there? <laughs> Oh, you're in Australia. Oh my gosh. I kind of wish it was brutally cold. It, it, it got up to 115 degrees Fahrenheit here today, which is hot, which is really hot. Um, but anyway, since I've already wasted enough time sort of getting this all together, um, I just wanted to jump into my favorites. I think there's like a huge delay too. So I'm sorry if I'm like responding to your chat very late, but anyway, I want to just sort of jump into my favorites or things that I've kind of come across over the month of June, which um, unfortunately is not a ton because I have been working uh, like a dog this past month. Um, a lot of things are due for the fall winter season, um, as you guys have probably heard me bitch enough about. So anyway, I'll stop talking about that. Um, but I wanted to talk about this one particular yarn. I'm just trying to finish a row here. And this is 100% Kashgora yarn. This is what it looks like. It is a sport weight yarn, but I'm knitting it on sixes and, hey Cassie. And um, it's, I think, coming out beautifully. So it's a pretty heavy sport weight yarn. So ca this Kashgora is from uh, a very specific breed of goat. It's like a goat that's sort of like, I think it's like a mixed breed between a cashmere goat and an Angora goat. That's the name Kashgora. Um, and the fiber is exactly like that. It has that kind of softness that cashmere has. But then there's like these lustrous bits in it. I hope you guys can see it. These lustrous bits in it that kind of remind me of mohair. 
So it's got like uh, the strength of mohair, but it, it really is very soft and kind of furry like uh, cashmere. So it's pretty wonderful. It's been a pleasure to, to knit with so far. And the most amazing thing about this yarn is, I'm gonna hold this up again because you're gonna be amazed. This is hand spun by uh, a woman out in Tajikistan. And every skein comes with a tag that tells you who the spinner is. Um, and it also gives you information on the yarn, of course. So there's a group of women, um, and you can find more information about them at cashmerepeople.com. And I will uh, put that info down in the description box. Hi. Hi, Boise, Idaho. You're near me, or I'm near you, I should say. Um, and Port oh, Puerto Rico. 70 degrees. Now, that's a lot better than 115. Um, so anyway, cashmerepeople.com, group of women um, who actually do uh, the spinning, um, and it's a very, very small company, and they you know source the yarn, I believe, in Afghanistan. Um, and then these women in Tajikistan um, actually spin this fiber. So I came across this particular yarn um, because a friend of mine went to TNNA, which is like a trade show, um, back in June, and I did not have the chance to go, so I told her, just let me know if you see anything interesting, and I've never heard her so excited about anything. She said, you have to check out this Kashgora yarn. It's absolutely beautiful. The story behind it is wonderful. You, you know, you help these women. Um, hey, Renee. Hello, Portland. Um... Hi! Hi from Vegas. We still have to meet up in it. Um, so, yeah, so she, you know, came across this yarn and she said, you just have to, you have to take a look at this site. You have to, like, get a skein of this and take a look. So um, she also mentioned that a good friend of mine is actually the one distributing this yarn in the U.S. So, you know, that got my attention as well. So Casey who owns Port Fiber in Portland, Maine. I don't know if you guys have ever been up there or have had the chance to visit that store, um, but it's absolutely wonderful. She has spinning classes, she has weaving classes, she sells all sorts of equipment, um, and Casey is also a wonderful dyer. She is um, just incredibly talented. Um, she dyes up a lot of fiber for spinning, um, and she sells that actually on her Port Fiber Etsy store, which is lovely. Um, and when I owned Gage Intention and I had my um, kind of natural colored Cormo yarn, she dyed up four colors for me, and so we I got to know her through that collaboration. Um, and she's just wonderful. So this yarn kind of stole her heart, which means a lot. Um, in my book and um, and so she loved it so much that she decided it needed to be distributed in the US so she's taken that under her wing I don't know how the woman does it um, so if you go to portfiber.com p-o-r-t um, as in Portland Maine um, portfiber.com you'll see that you can purchase um, the this yarn by this game so this colorway is scree which is one of the more natural colorways and it's 100 grams, 259 yards, um, heavy sport weight. And the skein is about, um, I think it was 40, 44 or $46. I think $46, uh, which I don't think is, is bad for basically a cashmere grade yarn that's been hand spun um, and is 100 grams. So I just wanted to throw that out there if you guys wanted to support Casey and these lovely ladies who spin this. I mean, I can't, if anyone out there spins, I can't believe the evenness, <laughs> how beautiful this is. And even if I can, you know, spin something evenly, then I'll kind of like screw it up with applying. Like I always mess it up somewhere, but this is absolutely amazing. And from what I can tell so far from this tiny swatch um, that I've made so far, there's no torquing. A lot of times, uh, especially when I hand spin yarn, um, if you don't have the tension right, either when you when you make your singles or when you're plying it, 
there's going to be some torquing. If you've applied it too much, underapplied it or overapplied it, it's going to show once you create the fabric from the yarn. And so this is always like the true test of hand spun yarn, um, how even and the quality of it is to actually knit it up and see if it torques. And there's, there's none. It's just absolutely beautiful. So hello, Vancouver. Hello, DC. We've got everyone. Yay. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to mention this yarn. Um, I hope you guys at least go to the site and take a look at it. There are a lot more colors um, on the Port Fiber site available. Um, and yeah, show it some love. So that is one thing I definitely wanted to um, mention to you guys. It is definitely a little bit hairy. Um, it's not making me sneeze. It's not bothering my throat. Um, that happens quite often, actually. Um, like if I'm spinning a fiber that I'm sensitive to, sometimes I have to wear a mask, which is horrible. Um, so when I was actually turning this into a ball, I noticed that there was quite a bit of fuzz coming off of it. And so I got a little bit worried. Um, but once I started knitting it, it was fine. I'm not having a reaction to it. Um, and it's actually calmed down quite a bit. There actually is no like fuzz on my desk right now or, any, or on me right now. So, um, so I think it was just during the winding. Anyway, oh, what a day. Can I just tell you guys a story about my June? We're just going to take a step back here. So, um, I've been working on a collection for interweave. Um, I probably shouldn't be talking about it, but I'm beyond caring at this point. So, uh, I've been in talks with the editor of Interweave for, uh, what are we in July? So probably about uh, a year at this point. Um, and she wanted me to do an entire collection for one of her smaller publications, um, which just started. And I won't divulge that. I'll leave a little bit of a surprise for when it is actually released. Anyway, do this uh, small collection for her. So it's 10 pieces. I did six garments. Um, Another Vancouver, hello. So 10 pieces. I did six garments, four accessories, and um, and the, the samples and the patterns were due June, sometime in June, June 10th, June 12th, somewhere around there, the Friday of that week. And so um, Interweave is in Colorado. I'm in Vegas. So I thought two days should be enough for shipping. I sent it uh, UPS uh, ground, and and that was it. Sent it off, 26 pound box. I mean, it was all the samples plus all the leftover yarn, which was quite a bit considering there were 10 pieces involved. So anyway, uh, sent this 26 pound box off <clears throat> and kind of didn't think about it. It was just like, thank God it's done. It's over. I got, you know, I emailed all the patterns in and, um, and just went about my schedule. Just had to work on a couple other collections, all these things. And then it dawned on me that I hadn't heard from them um, so this was a couple weeks. So like in a week and a half, I hadn't heard from the editor. So I texted her and I said, hey, I just want to make sure, you know, what do you think of the samples? Your silence is deafening. I hope you like them. You know, I was kind of going on and on. And um, she said, oh, she's like, oh, I bet. Um, I think there's a, a group of like the assistant editors. They're the ones that actually like intake samples and things like that. They check them in and, you know, I'm sure they have a whole process. And she said, oh, so many times stuff comes in, they check it in, they don't even tell me that it's arrived. So I'll check with them. Okay. A couple hours later, she emails me and she says, um, you know, they never arrived. <laughs> and I said, excuse me? She said, they never arrived. Um, you know, how did you send them? And I said, I sent them UPS. Um, let me check on the tracking. So I checked on the tracking and it just said it was delayed. No information could be given. And I thought, what the hell? I actually used stronger language than that. But I called UPS and they said, oh, this package is lost. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, <laughs> this package is lost. They said, uh, yeah, this package is lost. Um, but now, but basically, now that someone is looking for it, we will attempt trying to find it. I said, okay. Uh, yes, someone is looking for it, whatever. So I had to basically officially put in like a ticket that, that it was lost. So he said, all right, it's going to take a couple days for this ticket to kind of move through the system and get activated, et cetera, et cetera. It will take eight business days, uh, for us to finish our investigation. I said, okay. 
you know, and I thought at this point, I was trying to be, you know, logical. I was trying to be unemotional about it. And I thought, what am I going to do? If it's lost, it's lost. You know, like what? I'm not going to drive out to you. It was like stuck in some Colorado thing that was the last um, point of like intake for UPS. I said, I'm not going to drive out to Colorado. I'm not going to look. I can't look for it. I thought, you know what, Michelle? Just move on with your day. But I was so distracted that day. You know, obviously, I just kept thinking about all the time that went into it all the money that had gone into it already, all the effort, you know, just all, all the time I spent sample knitting, all the time I sample knitter spent knitting it. <clears throat> and, um, <laughs> you know, I always liked UPS, but now, now they're kind of, they're kind of on my shit list. Um, so uh, there is a happy ending though. There is a happy ending. So um, I just, at, you know, and I found out about this probably at about noon or what, right around lunchtime. And I was trying to work through my day. And at about like 1.30, I just said, forget it. I, I can't concentrate. I'm, I'm annoyed. I'm anxious. You know, I'm like sad, all this stuff. Um, so I just got, I changed into my pajamas, literally at like 1.30 in the afternoon. I changed into my pajamas. Hi, Paula. How are you? Um, ate cheesy puffs for the rest of the day. And um, literally like turned on the television grabbed a, a bag of Smart Puffs and just ate them in bed. Uh, my husband was just like, I'm so sorry. He just, he didn't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, what's there to say? So anyway, I had to tell the editor, blah, blah, blah. And she said, you know what? This happens with UPS all the time. I'm hopeful. And I thought, all the time? What the hell is going on? Anyway, long story short, I had kind of given up on it. I thought, okay, it's it's done. We're either going to have to re-knit them or whatever. And then... Um, Hey, Christine. Good to see you. Um, so just yesterday, I should say just three days ago, so on Monday, UPS called me and they said, we located your box. And this was probably the funniest conversation I had ever had. We located your box. And I said, oh, you know, thank goodness. Thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. And they're like, we just have to verify the contents. And I said, okay. And <laughs> this man, who I'm sure has never seen anything like this, was trying to read off all the yarn and the samples that I had in the box. So Lamb's Pride uh, was like Lammy, Lammy Proud, I think is what he said. And I was just cracking up. Um, so anyway, he had to go through the whole list of all the stuff that I had thrown in there. And it literally was just tons of yarn. And he just, he just said one sweater in Ziploc bag. I was like, yeah. He's like, <laughs> so anyway, he verified the contents. I said, yes. You know, he's like, do you want it returned to you? I said, hell no, please send it to the recipient, intended recipient. They mailed it on. And then, um, yesterday my editor at Interweave texted me and she said, guess what just arrived? And she said it was fun. The box was totally fine. Um, apparently UPS said that there was no address label on it. There was when I brought it to the UPS um, store. So I don't know. So anyway, that was my June. It was, you know, it started off that way and that lasted a couple weeks. So I just, I have been so distracted and um, yeah. And that happened. So Anyway, uh, well, the cat's out of the bag. So I have a 10-piece uh, collection coming out for Interweave. I believe um, I believe the launch date is uh, sometime in November. Thank you. Yes, I'm happy for the happy ending as well. Um, and hello, Australia. Another, another someone from Australia. Um, yeah, the heat probably did melt the label off or render the stickiness like completely useless. But yeah, I think the day that I brought it into UPS, it was one of those days where it hit like 115, 117. Um, and I'm carrying this huge box into UPS. That was, um, that was not cute. Um, so, so yeah, so Tempe's collection coming out for Interweave. It is going to be in one of their um, publications that's like an ebook only. It's not going to be on print. Um, so thanks. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. It's interesting. Um, I've never had to be involved in a collection that involved um, lots of different yarn. I'm actually trying to think. No, I've only ever done collections for like yarn companies or been involved in a collection where I've just done one piece. Um, so it was uh, 
interesting to have to work with 10 different yarns, 10 different yarn companies. Um, and so that was kind of challenging because a lot of my um, design inspiration comes from the actual yarn. You know, I think every yarn has a personality and I try and, um, I try and, you know, have that personality inform my design. So anyway, that was um, an interesting and fun um, experience. So anyway, that is my, that's my dramatic story from June. <laughs> I think if anyone here follows me on Snapchat, um, or if you, uh, hey, Archna, how are you? Good to see you. Um, yeah, so if any of you follow me on Snapchat, or if you watch any of my makeup videos on YouTube, I think I talked about having like the world's worst day. And that was the day that UPS was like, oh, it's lost. Um, that was like the world's worst day. Um, so yeah, so anyway, so Kashgora Yarn, cashmerepeople.com, check it out. It's a wonderful story. They have like a little kind of picture timeline of how the, the fiber gets from like the animal to the spinners and into our hands. Um, uh, Nancy Drew Mysteries is wondering uh, if Interweave selects the yarns or was it up to me? So the editor asked me which yarns I'd be interested in using, so I gave her, you know, a whole list of yarns, and um, I would say it was kind of half and half. They have advertisers that um, always work with Interweave, and I think those companies uh, sort of have priority in things like this because they, of course, always want their yarn showcased and things like that, so they kind of get first dibs. And then because this particular publication is fairly new, Enough public this imprint of interweaves is fairly new it, you know it's electronic only I think the editor kind of had a little bit more freedom in which yarns that she could um, pick for the collection um, because it is sort of still in an in an experimental stage um, so I gave her my input and uh, got a couple of yarns that I really wanted to use, um, including Mayak yarn. Again, if you've uh, followed me at all, you know I'm obsessed with Mayak yarn um, and was able to use um, the medium weight, the worsted weight yarn for one of the designs. Very excited for that one. That one is probably one of my favorite pieces in that collection. So, so yes, I hope that answers your uh, question. Um, <laughs> So if you guys can see Paula in the live chat, she is uh, one of the owners of Mayak. She lives in Brooklyn and holds Mayak events occasionally at the Trace Foundation in the West Village, which is a beautiful spot. Um, so follow her on Facebook, follow Mayak on Facebook, um, and you'll see um, she'll post events there um, and ones that are sort of knitting and yarn related. And she also has a pop-up store in this location that sells the Mayak yarn. So definitely stop by there. And, and I th again, on Facebook, I think there's all the information. Or follow her on Instagram. Um, all the social media stuff. We're all over. Okay. Oh, my God. You know it's a bad day. It's not a bad day. You know it's been a tiring day when at 540 I have to have coffee. So. Okay. Um, Ply Magazine. I think I talked about this not not in my last live stream, but in my video before in May. And I feel like I talk about this. This is only comes out quarterly, I believe. But I feel like I talk about this in every one of my favorites uh, videos. But this is the latest um, issue of Ply. <clears throat> it's bobbin lead. It's all about bobbin lead um, spinning wheels, which I've never used. I've always had um, flyer lead. <laughs> I'm at such a loss for words, flyer led um, spinning wheels. So anyway, uh, very uh, interesting, and it really makes me want to go out and test um, a bobbin lead wheel. I don't know if any of you guys have one out there and have any input on how it feels or if it feels any different. Um, but it's this publication is so good if you are into spinning, want to get into spinning, or anything. Uh, but the reason why I wanted to mention ply um, specifically today is... Um, this is the last issue of my subscription, and I'm so happy about it because they just started coming out with electronic versions. Um, so like an EPUB version of their magazine, which I love. Um, as much as I love hard copy, and um, 
as much as I, um, or I should say as, as hard as it was for me to get used to reading stuff on my iPad or on my Kindle, now that I'm used to it, I, I just so much more prefer it and I love that it doesn't take up that much space. So anyway, they've just gone electronic. Uh, so check it out if you are interested. Just love it, just love Ply. Um, oh, I also should mention, and I'll put this in the description box actually. So I learned this in the last live stream that I did, which was the first one that I did. Um, it takes a while, so all these live stream videos are like saved in YouTube and then they're uploaded like a video um, into my channel. Um, it takes a while to do it and maybe like a half hour or an hour, actually maybe a couple hours after I stop streaming, I guess YouTube has to save all the information and then upload it for me. Anyway, so I'm going to be putting stuff into this description box like that Cashmere People link. Um, and other things that I've mentioned, they'll be in this description box and so you'll be able to have access to this info whenever this stream gets kind of posted onto my channel. So it may take a while. I notice I just froze. Um, so what I'm going to be adding into this description box is um, Net stars. So um, I'm going to be involved with. Uh, <laughs> I think it's my connection. My connection is really spotty today. Um, <clears throat> uh, what was I talking about? Oh, knit stars. So I'm going to be involved in knit stars this year. Um, if you don't already know, I've posted a, a bunch of uh, things on my Instagram feed about this. So I apologize for like the spamming, basically. Um, but Knit Stars is like an online knitting summit, is what they're calling it. Um, it's basically like um, an online knitting retreat. So instead of having to go anywhere, you can just um, purchase it and you'll have access to, I believe there's 10 of us, there's 10 teachers, myself included, um, and a really great uh, group of teachers. I'm like, I'm like a little bit shy about it because they're so amazing. Um, like. Bita, who is the owner of Hedgehog Fibers, she's actually going to be doing a dyeing class, which if I wasn't involved, I would definitely be signing up just to see her class. Um, Stephen B. is one of the teachers. Amy Herzog, um, she has that whole custom fit system. If you're interested in that, um, you should take, uh, you should sign up. Um, and... <laughs> Um, it's YouTube. It's been like this for the last two hours or so. Oh, great. So I picked a, I picked a perfect day. Um, so yeah, it's YouTube's fault. <laughs> um, so, uh, so in terms of knit stars, so the class that I'm going to be teaching is finishing. So I'm going to be going over, um, things like the, like the things that you can do to help the finishing at the end, like things that you can do while you're knitting. Um, I'm going to be going over like wet blocking, um, using blocking wires, using blocking mats, um, and then the actual finishing, the seaming, uh, picking up stitches, uh, weaving in ends, all those sorts of things. Um, and uh, I was really excited to be able to do this class because I feel like it's a class that's, that's hard to do uh, in person, especially blocking, which is why I don't think it's covered um, well in in a in-person class because you've got the water and all that stuff so it's something I feel like I'll be able to do while being filmed very easily um, and so I'm really I'm really excited about that so I'm gonna put a link in the description box um, that you can't that you can click on <laughs> to register for knit stars uh, 2.0 um, if you would like to um, all of these links are affiliate links so each designer or each teacher I should say um, gets their own affiliate link. And so if you click on that link to sign up for the class, what happens is I get like a small percentage of the registration fee. And that's basically how I'm getting paid uh, to do this. So the more people that register through my link, the more money I make. So I would appreciate it, obviously, if you did use my link to sign up, but don't feel like you have to. If you'd rather um, sign up through a different teacher, 
by all means. I mean, you know, support whoever you want to support. Um, but I just wanted to be clear on that. I just wanted to make sure everyone knew what these affiliate links meant um, and why we all have different ones, why all the different teachers have different ones. So I'm going to put that link in the description box. Um, again, you can access that once um, this stream is posted to my channel. Um, I'm just going to put it in now because I'll forget otherwise. <laughs> Um, oh, uh, I'm just responding to Heather. She doesn't know how she signed up. It's fine. I just, I just want people to come. Um, what, <laughs> you know, what's funny about this. So Shelly Brander is the kind of the, the brains and the power behind Knit Stars. And she owns, um, a knitting store in Tulsa, Oklahoma. In Oklahoma, I'm pretty sure it's Tulsa. It's called Loops, um, and she's wonderful. She is um, she's one of those people. I like. I wish I had half of her energy. She's someone that just you know has endless amounts of energy and is just really positive. And she has great ideas and then sees them through. Like she's one of those amazing people. Anyway, she contacted me and to see if I'd be interested in doing Net Stars. I said, sure. I think that would be great. Um, and. Um, and she said, okay, great, you know, think about what you want to teach and, and you know, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. So I thought, I want to do finishing. Because, again, I, I think this is a good class to be able to film versus do live. So she said, oh, you know, she was a little bit hesitant. She said, oh, finishing, oh, I feel like we've done that before, blah, blah, blah. Because this is the second time uh, Knit Stars is going on. And I said, okay, well, I can think of something else. She goes, well, you know, no, no, let's, you know, finishing was always kind of part of someone else's class. If you want to do it just on that and kind of go more in depth by all means, you know what, let's just do it. And then she tells me later that the theme for this Knit Stars is needles flying. So she really wants it to be about like super quick, <laughs> like single skein or like uh, tips and tricks and like, you know, how to like speed up your knitting and things. And I just said, I was like, Shelly, <laughs> finishing, I don't think knitting is about being fast. I was like, but finishing definitely is not being, about, you know, about being like super fast. <laughs> So she said, that's okay, your class can be the exception. So anyway, Needles Flying um, is sort of the hashtag that we're using um, for it. I know it doesn't really go with finishing, just bear with me. Um, so, oh my gosh, you guys don't have to apologize. Just just sign up. I just want people to sign up for Knit Stars. I just want them to, to you know, um, join in and, and have a good time. Um... The link will be here after the live stream finishes. Sorry, I missed. Yes, so the link will um, will be in the description box of this video. So once I stop streaming, YouTube is going to do its thing and then upload this like it's one of my videos. Um, and then if you click there, like any of my other videos, there'll be a description box. So the link will be in there. Thank you, thank you, Nancy Drew Mysteries. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, so, so for Knit Stars, um, what they also try and do is have the uh, teachers pair up with a yarn company, you know, because we're going to be showing a lot of things and using a lot of yarn um, during these classes. So, I actually paired, um, partnered up with Plucky Knitter Yarn, and they created this exclusive color for me. And um, I was kind of unclear what was going to happen with this color. So I think what Shelly does is she just sells um, some of this yarn on the uh, Loops website um, at the end of the summer. So before the, the actual um, Knit Stars launches, which I think is um, in September, October. Um, so this color will be available. I have no idea what we're going to call it or anything like that, but I wanted something that was um, light in color because that's obviously a lot easier to see when you film. Um, and then I wanted to do something pink because that's been a really powerful color um, since the election. I'll just say that. So this has been um, a color that's been on my mind that has been, um, you know, it, it has a lot of meaning to it. So anyway, I figured a light pink would be good. So this is this is what we came up with. So I'll be using the Primo Aaron uh, base during most of my uh, modules in the class. So just so you know, that's what I'll be using. Um, 
<laughs> it's really pretty. And it's it's so plucky. It's like very barely um, variegated, not variegated, um, you know, has that hand dyed um, effect. So it's just, it's really, really pretty. Um, so yeah, so that's Knit Stars. I'm so excited for it. They're actually coming on Monday, Monday and Tuesday. They're going to be here in my house filming. Um, and you know, and what's so fun about the Knit Stars, it's not just these online classes, but they do these lifestyle pieces. So they're going to, uh, we're trying to figure it out um, because I think walk, walking up and down the strip here in Vegas is a little bit not easy to do. And um, so we're going to try and figure out like lifestyle uh, segments um, for us. Um, Archna is wondering if this will come in other bases. I think so. Um, I don't think that they've kind of thought it all the way out to the end. We just sort of, um, uh, we just sort of got this far. Um, so yeah, we'll figure it out and I, it will come in other bases. Uh, I just don't know which ones. <laughs> I know this is a surprising color for me, right? Pink. I'm letting my inner girl out. Um, so yeah, so that's Plucky, that's Knit Stars. Um, uh, so another thing I wanted to talk about is <laughs> this bag of yarn. Um, so last Rhinebeck, um, yeah, last Rhinebeck, uh, I walked into the Harrisville Designs booth and Harrisville is the mill that spins the Brooklyn Tweed, the Shelter, the Loft, and the Quarry Yarns. And so I know Nick, who is the son of the owners, who's basically kind of running the production now. And he's such a sweet guy. And he was like, oh, hey, how's it going? You know, he was chatting me up. And he said, hey, can I ask you a question? And I, he had, I can't remember the conversation entirely. In fact, he had to refresh my memory that we had this conversation at all. Um, but it was, you know, he had some... Um, like potential yarn colors. And he said, what out of these, you know, what, what jumps out at you? So apparently I picked out this one. Um, and he said, you know, I'm thinking about doing something special with some yarn colors. And I think what he's trying to do is, is like have like one run colors. So this is on his, um, I can't remember the names of his bases. Flywheel or what? No, Watershed. Uh, Watershed is the worst to wait. Flywheel, I believe, is like the, uh, the like the loft fingering weight one. Um, and uh, he said he's going to be doing sort of like these one-off colors um, and just sort of sell them on the Harrisville site. Like he's not going to wholesale them or anything. And he just wants to see how it goes. And I don't know if it's a way of kind of seeing what colors do well, what they should add to the permanent line or whatever. So this color that I picked apparently is one of the colors that he <clears throat> decided to do a small run of and he brought this up to Squam. Um, he sold some there. And um, I actually emailed him to see if he'd be putting this color up on the site if he had more. Um, yeah, I just, I love this green. It's, you know, it's so bright um, and fun. And I, you know, when I was at Rhinebeck, you know, you get caught up. You're in Rhinebeck, the leaves are changing, everyone has their amazing knits on. And I saw a whole bunch of sweaters knit in colors similar to this, very similar to this. Um, and a friend of mine that I was with, Allison, you probably know her, um, she had a sweater knit in this color and it was a Jill Draper um, sweater. Um, color. So you can imagine how beautiful that green was. And, um, and I think that's the mood that I was in. So I picked this color. Anyway, Nick contacted me. He said, hey, you'll never get, you know, I, I put that, co that green color into production. I had no idea what he was talking about at that point. And I said, okay. He said, remember that conversation? You know, whatever. So, um, so he said, let me send you some because, you know, it, it's gone over really well, blah, blah, blah. So he sent me a bag full of this yarn. So now I have 10 skeins of <laughs> this kind of one-of-a-kind Harrisville design. But I told him to keep me abreast of whether he was going to be doing this, um, you know, regularly. Once a quarter, once a month. Um, and, you know, when he was posting these colors up. And that way we could kind of spread the news um, and let people know when, you know, when this was happening. Oh, yeah. This will make gorgeous, gorgeous cables. Hello, South Texas. I bet it's hot down there too. 
please tell me it's hot down there. Make me feel better. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this, um, I keep forgetting, Watershed. Um, this Watershed yarn, um, it's milled exactly like the Brooklyn Tweed yarn. So I, be I believe, yes, it's a woolen spun yarn. Obviously, it's at Har uh, from Harrisville. Um, but they use different wool. So it's not quite as um, spongy as the Brooklyn Tweed yarn, um, which I happen to like. But this is uh, kind of like a like a sturdier, kind of more like of a workhouse kind of yarn. So it's it's lovely. So anyway, I will keep you guys abreast of what Nick and Harris will end up doing with these special colors. I do hope he brings this color back because I think it's. Um, I think it's great. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> okay, Cassie, I'll make that happen. Knee length cabled poncho blanket shawl concoction. We'll do that. Um, oh, good. It is super hot there. Yeah. I'm like sweat. I have the AC on. I have my ceiling fan on. Um, I usually have the shades closed, but I open these shades so that you guys could actually see me. And I'm like sweating. I'm sweating up a storm. Um, Hey, do you ever get a wild animal on your <laughs> um, So Aloha Hawaii, and I think I probably will just do a giveaway on this and maybe some other yarns that I have um, on my Instagram page um, or on my YouTube channel. I'm just trying to reach like a milestone of some sort. Um, so yeah. <laughs> hey, Jessica. Yes, this definitely needs to be put into cables. For sure. Um, but yes, I am thinking about doing a giveaway. And do I ever get well one in it with some neon speckles? In fact, I love neon speckles. And I have some hedgehog that I bought from Fiberspace down in Alexandria, Virginia. And I just love it. But I don't, I don't know what to do with it. Because I'm not really an accessories knitter. Um, I love knitting garments, but I don't actually really wear a lot of hand knit garments. It's, it's a weird, I live a weird life. But anyway, it's, um, I love neon speckled yarn. I have a lot of it. I just don't ever knit it. <laughs> um, are you having fan or AC on, Michelle? I have both. I have AC, I have central AC, which has been on since like May. Um, and I have a ceiling fan. I feel like I need like a desktop fan just like shooting at me. Um, yeah. What else? Did I want to talk about anything else? I think that's all, that's all I pretty much had to talk about because this month has been really, um, not a good one. I'm glad it's over. I'm glad it's July. I'm glad we had a lovely Independence Day with no, um, no scariness. There was, I know there was a lot of, so I used to live in, I used to live in New York City and I used to live in Long Island City, Queens, which is where they basically shoot off the fireworks. And I still have a lot of friends li that live there. And they said that the security this year was like over the top. It was like out of control. They were cordoning off, I mean, all and like almost every other block and you could only enter the park along the river at these certain points. Um, Shout out. Um, so, you know, and they kept talking about possible terrorist attacks. So anyway, I'm glad nothing happened. Um, nothing here happened uh, like that. So, or one of those hats that keep you cool. <laughs> um, I miss New York. I, you know, I love Las Vegas. I'm loving living here and the lifestyle here. It's really easy. Um, especially compared to New York, where I feel like everything is hard. Um, but July 4th really made me homesick because, because, you know, because of the fireworks and where I lived and we would just go up to a roof and we would see them like, you know, pretty much like right over our heads. It was great. We'd have friends over, barbecue. Um, and, you know, here in Vegas, they have um, fireworks, but nothing like really central. There aren't like Las Vegas city fireworks anywhere so you know when you're driving around you just saw all these like random fireworks kind of going off which was pretty cool but there was no big like one show which is what i was kind of hoping for um my my food posts <laughs> someone said i should start a food channel i that would take a lot of time um but i <laughs> 
but I would love to be able to uh, eat and get paid for it. I think that would be amazing. Um, can you talk about coloring raw fiber and weaving? I'm thinking of taking a class in that, maybe a little info. Um, coloring raw fiber, do you mean dyeing raw fiber? Kim Cash is asking this question. Um, do you mean dyeing raw fiber and weaving? I don't know. Um, I don't know much about weaving myself. Um, I have a little cricket loom and I have woven like nothing really. Okay, so um, so dyeing raw fiber. So I know the challenge with dyeing raw fiber is that it felts very very easily because obviously you're you're dipping it into um, hot water. Um, I've never done it personally. I've only ever tried to hand dye yarn. And that's a bit easier because you just sort of dunk it in, you leave it there for however long you want. But with fiber, um, it takes a long time for it to penetrate the fiber. And then at that time, it also is kind of like felting the fiber at the same time. So I know people have a hard time with it. So there's all these other methods that you can do to kind of prevent that so you can you know lay it out over saran wrap and kind of squirt the dye over it you can microwave it to kind of set the dye um, and if you guys are familiar do you know skinny dipping Christine Link is the owner of skinny dipping and she dyes some of the most beautiful hand dyed yarn I have ever seen and she used to dye fiber and she stopped and I asked her you know why she stopped and she said if I can figure out how to do it without all that saran wrap, which she just thought was just awful for the environment, so much respect for that. She said, if I could figure out how to do it without all that saran wrap, I would do it. Because she's like, I can't do it in pots. It takes too long, yada, yada. So that's all I know about hand dyeing fiber is that it, it um, sorry, my hair is coming out, is that it felts very easily, and so it makes the process a little bit more difficult. Um, and weaving, I'm sorry, I don't know much about, but spinning, um, spinning, I love spinning. I'll spin anything. I'm not a very technical spinner. There's a lot of spinners out there that can tell you, you know, the speed at which to, you know, treadle, the ratio between like treadling and like the way they move their hands and like plying and the, the angle of the ply. I don't do any of that. Um, and when I spin hand dyed fiber, there's a way that you can kind of break apart the fiber and like figure out how to spin it to achieve the multicolored yarn that you want. I don't do any of that. I just spin it the way it is. And I always like kind of how random and what a surprise it ends up being. Um, but there are books on that, um, a lot of books on that. Um, yeah, on how to like spin, I think it's called colored spinning, color spinning, something like that. Anyway, there are a lot of good books on that. I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> Did I answer your question at all? Was I even close? Fractal spinning, yes. I think that's one method of being able to like figure out color placement when you um, when you spin with, with hand dye fiber. I need to work out my arms to do drop spinning, I guess. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's not very arm intensive, um, so don't worry about that. Most spindles are very, very light. Um, and you're moving your hands enough, like when you have to wind it up and when you're actually spinning. So you're moving it. It's not like when you're blow drying your hair and your arm just gets like numb. You're moving it, and, and so it's, it's really, it's actually very easy to do. My arms never get tired doing it. So I used to have, um, someone asked me what wheel I have. I used to have um, a ladybug, a shack ladybug. Um, but I sold that um, because it just it just took up too much space. As much as I loved it, it just took up too much space. Um, and so I now have a Hanson Crafts e spinner, which is an electronic spinner. And so it's it's tiny. It's actually downstairs. I would show it to you, but it's tiny. Um, you know, it's just the size of like the flyer and the bobbin, and you know, and like the teeny tiny engine that it is. And I absolutely love it. It doesn't take up that much space. Um, I miss treadling a little bit, but I just, you know, I just really love the meditative motion of spinning and kind of watching the flyer go round and round. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so that's the that's the wheel that I have. I have a I have way too many drop spindles 
for someone who, does, who doesn't have time to do it. Um, can I recommend an economical spinning wheel? Economical. Um, you know, most people love the Lendrum, and I don't think that they're that much. Um, I don't know what model, but I know Lendrum is the company that a lot of <clears throat> excuse me that a lot of people really enjoy. Um, the, the Shack Ladybug is not that expensive, especially compared to their all wooden one, which um, I can't remember what it's called now. Um, economical. I think the Louette spinning wheels are also um, moderately priced. Um, you know, honestly, I would, if you have the opportunity to go to like a sheep and wool festival, um, I would just try out wheels. Um, obviously if the pricing is important to you, you know, ask, you know, how expensive it is or whatever and try the ones that are, oh, you know, what's good actually are the Kromsky wheels. I know, uh, Jared, Jared Flood has a Kromsky wheel and he loves it. And I don't think that they're very expensive, um, in terms of, in terms of spinning wheels. Um, but yeah, I think it really, um, it, you know, you just want a wheel that you're going to mesh with because I love the ladybug. I know some people don't like it. Um, again, there's all these different kinds of wheels like flyer lead or bottom lead, um, tensions and things like that. So I would definitely test them out and then, and then back into the whole economical part of it. Like, you know, the pricing of it and what, which one kind of suits suits you, um, lifestyle was. Um, easily transported. You know, none of them are. They're all pretty. <laughs> they're all pretty heavy. I know some of them break down or whatever, but they're still um, bulky. They're still awkward. Um, yeah, I think Spin Illusion has some that are you know smaller. So I would look into that. Um, but in terms of easily transported, definitely. Um, yeah, even the wheels are just heavy, especially ones that are made out of wood. They're just heavy. But if you are open to the idea of an e-spinner, I love my hands and crafts. It's not exactly cheap, but it is, it's phenomenal. I just love it. Um, so it's 610. I have to go. I hear my, I hear my husband wanting to, <laughs> to go grab dinner. And you know how I am about my food. Um, I need to eat. So I, again, I apologize for that 20 minute delay. Um, I think I'm just going to just stream live from now on and not try and pre set up an event beforehand. I think that's where I went wrong this time, but I have my headset on. So there was no feedback this time. So we're learning, we're learning as we go. Um, so yeah, so I'll be back, um, I guess in August to do sort of like a July, um, like a July favorites, um, Thank you. Thank you guys for tuning in. I just, I love it. I love that you guys are here and just sort of hanging out with me and <laughs> yes, food. Um, and yeah, I hope you, I hope you enjoy that. It's so good to, uh, to see you guys. So enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the rest of your week. Be well, be safe, take care, and I will see you next time. Bye guys.